Uh, thanks, uh, thanks, Rafense. Um, I'm uh, Nick Dempers, a principal process engineer from Senate, a uh, DRA global company, and I'll be uh, chatting to you a bit about, uh, about copper processing. Um, I'll briefly go through an introduction, then uh, followed by mineralogy, then I'll have a look at low grade sulfides, oxides, processing, and finally I'll uh, take a quick look at some design considerations when looking at a process plant. Copper is a reddish metal that's exceptionally good conductor of uh, heat and electricity, um, and it's mainly used in uh, infrastructure, electrical and electronics, transportation, and uh, a bunch of other things, and it's kind of becoming more useful as we move along into the technology industry. Um, so uh, there's been supposedly a shortage in demand or supply of, of copper recently, which has resulted in the price increasing from approximately $6,000 a ton to more than $10,000 a ton where it's uh, sitting at the moment. Um, this has partly been blamed on uh, electric vehicles, which use approximately four times more copper than uh, normal vehicles, which is approximately 60 uh, kilograms of copper per vehicle. Copper is mainly, uh, the main producers are Chile, Peru, um, China, uh, the DRC and, and the USA. Um, and uh, then I'll move directly into the uh, copper processing. There are three predominantly uh, copper ores, sulfides, oxides, and an intermediate ore. Um, and all of these can be either low grade or high grade. The low grade ore is processed predominantly by uh, heat leaching, followed by solvent extraction and electro winning. The high grade sulfides is usually flotation, followed by either smelting or, uh, or roasting and a hydrometallurgical route. The mixed ore is, uh, is usually flotation, followed by um, the tails is sent for leach and solvent extraction electro winning, while the uh, concentrate is sent for roasting and hydro and, and not usually smelting because the grade is usually a bit low. Oxide ore is uh, sent for whole ore leaching, followed by solvent extraction and uh, electro winning. Um, the mineralogy of, of the sulfides ore, um, the main minerals are chalcocite, which is the silver minerals over here, chalcopyrite, which is the gold, and, uh, and bornite, which is the multiple colors of the ore over here. And this has uh, led to it being called uh, peacock ore. The oxide mineralogy, the predominant mineral, minerals are chalc uh, malachite, which is the green, the green minerals. Uh, azurite are the uh, light blue minerals and chrysocolla are these uh, uh, light blue silicates over here. Um, the low grade or the flow sheets for the sulfides, oxide and mixed ore is very similar. However, there are some process details uh, that I won't go into here, but the, the ore is, is crushed in a crushing circuit and then agglomerated and quite often lixiviant is, is added over here. However, it's not usually necessary to add any uh, binding agent. The ore is then stacked onto a, a heap and the uh, further lixiviant, which is mainly raffinate from the solvent extraction, is, is put onto the heap. The copper is dissolved. This is uh, sent to solvent extraction uh, where the, uh, the copper is removed from the um, leach solution and uh, then transferred to the um, the electrolyte and sent for electro winning, which produces a copper cathode. Uh, the leftovers or ripias on heap is reclaimed and then sent to the tailing storage facility. Um, the sulfides are, um, are crushed and then sent to a milling and classification circuit before being sent to the flotation circuit. The concentrate from the flotation is thickened and then sometimes filtered and sent to a smelter or a, uh, a roaster for further uh, processing. The tails is also thickened and then sent to a, a tailing storage facility. Um, the oxide, the, the ore is crushed 
uh, sent to a milling circuit as well. However, there's no need for flotation. It's sent directly to, um, to leaching with uh, sulfuric acid. The leach uh, slurry is sent to a CCD circuit where the uh, copper is washed out of the, uh, out of the ore. Uh, the underflow from the CCD circuit is sent to a TSF while the overflow goes to solvent extraction where it's purified, then electrowinning to produce uh, copper cathode. If we move then on a little bit to design considerations, firstly, the primary crusher. So for a large um, throughput of ore, it's very common to use a gyratory crusher. Um, uh, however, for lower tonnages, it's very common to use a jaw crusher. Um, we tend to favor the jaw crusher on lower tonnages because it's very simple to operate and maintain, very good for uh, the uh, African uh, operations. If we move then on to comminution, there are what we consider high level two uh, types of comminution circuits. The first is three stages crushing. The run of mine is crushed in a primary crusher, which could be a jaw crusher or, or, um, or another type of crusher. And then it's sent to two stages of crushing, secondary and tertiary, which are normally cone crushers. Product then is sent to a, a bore mill and the, and the cyclone circuits. The other circuit only has a single stage of crushing. The, um, the ore is then produced sent to a sag mill and uh, it is then run, the, uh, the outlet goes to, is mixed with the outlet from a bore mill and goes to a cyclone and, and it produces the particle size distribution that you require. Um, the three stages of crushing is usually used for hard ore. Uh, it has a lower power consumption than a sag mill. However, uh, it has uh, more maintenance and uh, there can often be operability issues, especially if the ore is, uh, is soft or clayey and sticky. Um, we would then, then look at, at a sag mill. Um, on the opposite of that, the sag mill use medium to soft ore and is better for, for much uh, stickier ore. So if I move on to flotation, flotation for me, bubbles in the bottom, good stuff comes off the top. Um, it's uh, usually used for sulfide and mixed ore. Uh, we don't typically use it for oxide ore, although one can use it for oxide ore. The, on the bench scale in the laboratory, the recoveries look fantastic, but uh, the um, recoveries and operability on, in full scale is often really difficult and uh, you, you struggle to get your recoveries in your grades. And you know, most plants that have put in oxide ore tend to uh, move back to whole or leach. So uh, the next uh, consideration is uh, tank cells or conventional cells. Tank cells are pretty much what they say. They are, are a tank and the slurry is, is introduced on the one side. Air is added down the uh, impeller and uh, the agitator agitate, um, mixes the air and the slurry. The concentrate comes off the top, whereby the, uh, the slurry or the tails come out the bottom. Conventional cells are, are very similar uh, but in concept, but they're much smaller. So there are a whole bunch of them in a small unit um, and the slurry is, is entered in the one side and then comes out the other side. Air is added in each one and then the concentrate comes off the top and the slurry goes through. Um, the design consideration, so tank cells are, uh, are much bigger Flotation, the conventional cells are usually only about eight, cu eight cubic meters and would only be used on smaller plants or plants where there's a very high mass pool. The next uh, consideration is the uh, grade or recovery curve. This is uh, usually determined by, uh, by test work and then you decide uh, what you know, grade or recovery. So if we look at this graph over here, uh, your recover is is a hundred percent, but the the grade is 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 the same as the feed. Or you can go to a um, your recovery is is zero um, at the bottom. Um, 
so if we the main determination of, of where you operate on these kind of grade curves is is what grade or recovery you require so smelters usually require a much higher grade than a, a hydrometallurgical or a roaster um, so you would then aim at a, at a much higher grade um, one way of improving the uh, the grade but also you know running at a high recovery is uh, is if is to include a regrind circuit this can help you to improve your grade and recovery um, at the same time so if we move on then the uh, flow sheet options for um, sulfide so the by far the most common is to uh, to take the concentrate and treat it in a smelter the smelter will then cast the the copper to form an anode which would be sent to electro refinery to produce lme grade a copper which which could can which will then be sold um, the other option if the uh, concentrate is slightly uh, lower grade then you would roast it the calcine from the roaster will be sent for a leach uh, and ccd circuit followed by solvent extraction and electro winning to produce uh, your copper cathode. The final option is a full hydrometallurgical circuit where the uh, concentrate is leached in a pox albion or bio leaching process. Typically, we then sent to a CCD, and uh, finally SX and electro winning to produce the cathode. So the uh, the sulfide grade of the concentrate is the main determiner on which uh, process routes uh, you would follow. Other important considerations are a market for sulfuric acid. If there is a market, you would tend to go for a roaster or a smelter. Um, and another one is the availability of, uh, of acid consuming material. For example, if you've got an oxide ore, you could use um, that to neutra neutralize the acid that's produced uh, you know, in the uh, by the leaching of the uh, of the sulfides. Here is just some is a picture of the Lualaba um, smelter in uh, in the DRC. It's near uh, Kolwezi, and here we have uh, an anode casting furnace and uh, uh, some cathodes that are harvested from an electro refinery. Um, here is a pox autoclave um, that is used, a copper pox uh, pressure oxidation autoclave. Here are some bio leaching, and this is an isomol that's used in the, in the Albion process. So with the decreasing grades of, uh, of sulfide concentrates and the low grade ores, these hydrometallurgical uh, processes are becoming more and more important. I just included a quick uh, slide for the uh, design considerations of, of the oxide ore. Um, so crushing followed by milling and then a leaching, a leaching circuit with sulfuric acid followed by CCD, SX and NDW to produce a copper cathode. Most uh, hydrometallurgical circuits are produced out of, are made out of stainless steel. Uh, normally we use a 316L or a light duplex uh, 2101. Um, 304 stainless steel tends to be uh, too low grade. Uh, we can't use it in, um, in a copper uh, plant. I also highly recommend you stay away from rubber lining because the solvent in the solvent extraction process tends to corrode the, the rubber lining and it doesn't last for a long time. The most, probably the most important consideration in a, uh, in a copper oxide processing plant is the acid consumption followed closely by the water balance. Um, so quite often we would investigate um, you know, milling in raffinate or milling in acidic media to try and improve the acid uh, utilization and the, uh, uh, the copper leaching. Um, this obviously means that you have, a, have to have a mill that's either lined or made of stainless steel. Other important considerations of the design of the uh, 
copper oxide circuits is the recovery of other metals. And specifically in uh, Zambia and the DRC, there is a lot of cobalt in the ore. So we need to take that into consideration when de designing the, uh, the recovery circuits. Um, and then in, in places like South America or in places where there's uh, very uh, scarcity of water, they very often use uh, seawater for the process design in which case the uh, chlorides and the impact of the chlorides in the process, uh, the process operation and indeed the uh, materials of construction of the system are, are very important. Um, here is a, just a, a quick picture of a, a leach circuit in the DRC, showing a, a number of leach reactors. And this is a, an example of a uh, of a uh, leach reactor that has uh, SO2 addition to leach the uh, cobalt mineral, but uh, there is also um, copper copper leaching in these vessels. If we move then on to the uh, the solvent extraction, so in this method, the uh, copper PLS from the uh, the leach circuit is introduced to the extraction stages of the solvent extraction. It moves through, and while it's moving through, the copper is moved over from the PLS onto the uh, onto the loaded onto the organic to produce loaded organic. This produces a SX raffinate stream that uh, contains no copper, and a loaded organic con stream that contains the bulk of the of the copper and none of the other impurities. This loaded organic stream is then sent to the uh, the stripping section. In the stripping section, spent electrolyte, which contains very low copper, is introduced, and then the copper moves from the loaded organic into the electrolyte to produce an advanced electrolyte that contains a bulk of the copper and is sent to uh, electrowinning. So each of these extraction is, is for copper processing, usually a mixer settler. This is a diagram of a mixer settler, so we can see that organic together with uh, pregnant solution or PLS is introduced into the bottom of the primary mixer. This is, is mixed and then sent to a secondary mixer for further contact of the uh, aqueous and organic before overflowing into the settler where the, uh, the organic comes off the top and the aqueous then comes off, off the bottom. Um, and finally, we move on to the uh, electro winning circuit. So the electro winning circuit is essentially electro winning of, uh, of copper. And uh, so a potential is placed across the copper and uh, copper is produced at the cathode um, and then is plated there and you can harvest it. So in this uh, picture over here, it is a fairly old electro winning cell. You can see it's got um, starter sheets that are used for the copper and they're also uh, balls that are placed on top of the um, of the bath because uh, oxygen is released and then it entrains acid which causes a huge pro problem in the electro winning circuit. Here is um, a another one a circuit but this one however has got uh, stainless steel blanks so the copper plates on the stainless steel blanks uh, they are then harvested uh, with a crane and uh, these stainless steel blanks are then uh, transported to a cathode uh, stripping machine and the LME grade A copper is stripped from the, from the blanks to produce uh, these um, cathodes that are then sent for sale. Um, and that is copper processing in a nutshell. Thanks so much for listening. If you want any other information, you're welcome to contact me on this email address um, and I'll be available for any questions a bit later. Thanks.